not very good at technology. So um, Jeff gets to use the uh, uh, Jeff gets to use the summer interns to make his pretty slides, and Steve and I we had to do it ourselves. So um, yeah, no, no pretty pictures here, I'm afraid. Uh, as you are, as most of you already know, I'm Louis Via, I'm the WDR Council. I do a lot of uh, open source stuff. Uh, this is Stephen Laporte, who's just generally awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, this is our open licensing talk. Uh, you know, this is sort of the legal glue that holds together so much of what we do. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about it. Um, uh, you know, why are we here? So uh, this is where I. This is where you have your chance to leave the room politely. Uh, if, if you know, if you've just been waiting for for a gap to get out. Um, what we're going to try to sort of summarize here is sort of the last year or two in open licensing, right? Uh, it wasn't that long ago that open licensing was essentially open source licensing uh, plus Creative Commons. And that is, uh, you know, changing and growing a little bit. And so we wanted to catch people up uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully also have a little bit of time at the end to, uh, to discuss What's the impact on Wikipedia? What's the impact on individual Wikipedians and Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia communities? Um, so that's that's what we're here for. Uh, I guess we already told you this. So uh, I'm going to start with open data, uh, and then we're going to discuss open culture, and uh, and uh, and then Stephen's going to discuss open culture, and I'll go back for open licenses. So uh, starting with open data in part because it's the new and interesting one, right? I see that there are some Wikidata folks in the room. Uh, there are some uh, Maps folks in the room. Uh, it, it, open data is sort of a new thing, right? Uh, until very recently, Creative Commons licenses didn't deal with databases. Uh, in fact, until only about 15 years ago, there was no such thing as a database license, right? That's a pretty new concept that the European Union created not that long ago. Uh, and so we are, um, so we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, where we're going with that, right? Uh, not just us in particular, but in fact, lawyers all over the world, if you ask them, if you ask a U.S. lawyer, even an intellectual property lawyer, and you say, what's a database right? And the odds are about 50-50, they'll go, mm -hmm. um, And I'm really glad we have a German lawyer with us this summer, because even I, who have been thinking about this stuff for quite some time, still spend a fair bit of time going um, when, when we're talking about open data. So, uh, and you know, that's different from open culture and Creative Commons, where a lot of those issues, uh, you know, Creative Commons had a new take on a lot of those issues, uh, just as the GPL did many years ago, but every IP lawyer knew what copyright was when Creative Commons came out, right? And that's not necessarily the case now. Um, so the first thing, uh, new data licenses. Uh, there's a whole bunch of licenses here. I want to flag one in particular um, that is uh, uh, that, that that we're seeing that we're starting to see quite a bit of. It's a license called the Open Government License, and I'm telling you that in the in the singular, right? Oh, there is the Open Government License. That's a, a little bit of a lie. Um, so the Open the Open Government License is, is a bunch of governments who are saying, "Oh, open data is awesome. We want to do big data and." How, and then they go to their lawyers, and their lawyers say, mm -hmm. um, uh, and so uh, I believe it started in the UK, where um, the UK has been a leader in government publication of data, and so they created an open government license, which basically says, uh, it does the right thing. It basically says, hey, we publish this database, we publish this information, 
uh, go and have a blast with it as long as you attribute us, right? Uh, so straightforward, simple, best kind of license, right? And then uh, one of the Canadian provinces was like, oh, that's great. Uh, except if you screw up the attribution, we want to be able to sue you in Canada instead of the UK, right? Putting in mind that nobody ever actually sues over attribution. But, so they tweaked it to Canada, and then the next province over said, oh yeah, we like that too, but we want to make our own tweak uh, for Canada. So this is, um, some of you have been around uh, open licensing for a long time. This will remind you of open source licensing in, around the turn of 2000, where everyone thought, hey, uh, we need our own license. And so they put in subtle differences, and it was sort of annoying and confusing for everyone. Um, uh, so that's where we are right now, that the new licenses are sort of, they're sort of making things confusing. So are, are all attribution compatible with? Um, uh, so let me switch to my next slide. And, uh, and well, so the question was, are all of these new licenses compatible with Wikidata? Uh, and uh, the question, the answer is, uh, it's, unfortunately, it's the lawyer's answer. Uh, uh, everybody say it with me. It depends. Um, and so part of why the, the, the database rights and Wikidata memo that we're working on uh, for, for publication on Wikilegal is going to address this a little bit. Um, the big thing that all these licenses do, uh, that all these new good data licenses do, is they address database licensing. Like I said, uh, if you look through Creative Commons 3.0 for the phrase database, um, at least in the unported version, you're not going to find that phrase. Right? And uh, so for a long time, we were able to say, we're in the US, there are no database rights. Uh, we're also created collaboratively, uh, and most of the database rights laws in, in the EU, EU, at least to our understanding, uh, they don't fit with creative, with collaborative, uh, collaborative, collaborative creation. Uh, in other words, you can't get it when a community's creating the database. So we think we're okay there, right? Uh, we think these licenses are compatible, but we're going to have to look at the nuances, and that's something that. Um, you know, Wikidata doesn't yet have the culture of looking closely at licenses and analyzing them in the way that Collins does. Uh, and so I think one of the things we're going to, at the, the end of this data section, we're going to say, hey, open questions. And one of them is, where is Wikidata going from here, right? Uh, and it's not just Wikidata that has this question about uh, collaborative licenses, right? Uh, as many of you know, uh, one of the reasons that, uh, uh, that Sweden hit uh, you know, uh, a million articles this year is because they have several hundred thousand uh, articles that are generated by bots, right? Uh, and that comes that out of the database. The right. And so some of the database licensing questions apply right now. to main Wikipedia uh, just as they do to Wikipedia these days. So database licensing uh, is a big trend. We're seeing this not just in Wikidata, but also in OpenStreetMaps, uh, CC0, and the Open Database License. Both of those have been around for a while, but they address databases, uh, and that's really important. Uh, increased government publication is a big trend in, in databases. This is awesome, right? Governments are giving us stuff to play with. Okay. Um, on the downside, most government lawyers have no idea what they're doing when it comes to this. They're still learning. Uh, and so we're going to see mistakes in licensing. We're going to see really sweet piles of government data that are badly licensed and that we can't actually get at, even though we really badly want it. And we're going to have to exercise uh, both some discipline to not put it in, and I think especially at the chapter level, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for chapters to say to their local governments, hey, guys, we really want to use this. Uh, can, can, I'm sorry, can you change the license, right? There's going to there's gonna be some opportunities to say that, which means we're going to get some awesome stuff and sometimes we're going to lose. The final trend I already mentioned, uh, license proliferation. There's a group called the Open Definition uh, Advisory Committee. Uh, which I am a member of. It is uh, trying to fight license proliferation by having a set of rules for when a license is actually an open data license as opposed to an open data license. Um, so we're, we're trying to nip that problem in the bud. We'll see. The big questions for open data, 
as somebody already said, what are the incoming licenses? How do we analyze them? How do we build a culture of compliance? Uh, because you know we want to, uh, you know, both because it's the right thing to do, and because we want to minimize risk for our contributors. We want to make sure we're doing the right things there. The other thing is uh, the other big question that I see on the horizon with open data is uh, advocacy for the right licenses. Right, telling governments, hey, you've got ninety percent of the way there. You put that data on the internet. It's all in a nice format that I can parse. And can you please just change the license a little bit so we can use it? Right. Uh, I was just sent this afternoon. Uh, our friends at Creative Commons Germany uh, put out a great uh, brochure on why the non-commercial uh, clause is a bad idea. And I think we're going to see us. We're going to have to see a similar round of advocacy around open data licenses that are close to open but not actually open. Some of them will be because they have non-commercial clauses. Some of them will be because they have really weird or wacky attribution clauses or non-modification clauses. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of opportunity for uh, for the foundations, for the chapters, for you as individuals to call up your local uh, your local government and say, "Hey, guys! Oh, we love you. You're so close." So, so many awesome things will happen if you can just change this one paragraph. Right? Um, so, and uh, do we want to pause now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any open data questions that we can answer quickly? We'll also have a Q and A at the end. But while we're on data, um, you know, Denny's typing quietly, which is awesome. Don't, don't look up. Stay. Any, anybody else have open data? Uh, yeah. You, you sort of addressed this, but is there an opportunity for? Creative Commons or somebody to craft a standard license and then advocate that the government's not that exact. Uh, so that's a great question. So the question, for those of you who couldn't hear it, is: Is there an opportunity for Creative Commons to create a standard license and uh, advocate for, um, you know, sort of having one license again? Uh, and Creative Commons, uh, so I don't want to steal Stephen's thunder, so I'll let him answer most of that. I do want to say there is already Creative Commons Zero, which addresses the database question, and that's what we're using for Wikidata. So they're already part of the way there. Uh, so part of, uh, you know, if, if, if anybody, if, if your local member of parliament calls you up and says, hey, uh, I need a license, the simple short answer is Creative Commons Zero is your friend. Um, and if they ask you, what about all these other things? No, 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 Creative Commons Zero is your friends. That's the simple answer. That's the one that I give you my legal blessing that is actual legal advice. I tell your local <laughs> government uh, to use Creative Commons Zero. Um, but uh, that's actually a great segue um, to open culture. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about open culture licenses. And we have open culture licensing experts in the room. so. Um, if you have any questions about them, I'm happy to answer them, but we might be able to steal someone else's expertise as well. Uh, so we define culture as sort of a, a technical distinction between uh, open source licenses, uh, not because the copyright law that applies to them is different, but because the way we use the actual cultural works is slightly different. So we need slightly different licenses uh, for them. Uh, if you uh, when I think about what is a cultural work and a cultural license, it's pretty safe to assume is it text and images, you're probably thinking about cultural licenses, but it's something you have to execute or compile, it's probably uh, going to be later on this time. And if it has, and if it has many rows and tables, it's <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. <laughs> So uh, the open cultural license field is uh, relatively predominated by Creative Commons, especially on Wikimedia projects. And we have, uh, we're on the brink, I guess, of a new addition to the Creative Commons suite of licenses, uh, the 4.0 version of their license, which will include the attribution and share alike clauses, just like 3.0, which is uh, usually used. And Creative Commons 4 is a, a really interesting prospect. It, uh, it gives us a lot of uh, uh, new advantages that we see in readability. Uh, I have here as an exercise in copyright uh, license interpretation uh, find the attribution requirement in this section of CC 3.0. Um, if anyone spots it out, talk to me afterwards, and uh, uh, we can try and see if we're right. Uh, we can hire you. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Have you like, fund a memo for us or something? Uh, it, but this is the way it looks in 4.0, which makes it much easier, which is good for us because you know, we, we can get lawyers and we can figure out how to comply. But it's especially good for reusers and people who are not familiar with Creative Commons licenses and sort of the, just the general uh, 
trend in how you comply with something like an attribution clause. So the, the entire license is much more people and clear, uh, which would be a huge advantage. So just, it's, just to be it's clear, in there. it is it's somewhere in there. It is just a wall of text, right? It, it, it's not something that is illegal or something that is, I guess, problematic for a lawyer. I mean, I, I love this. I would, I would read this some weekends. <laughs> but I don't want you to have to do that, right? Uh, this is something more like what you do, what you want. And the attribution requirements stay relatively the same. Uh, you don't have to learn a whole lot new about Creative Commons to deal with Creative Commons 4.0, but if you are explaining how to comply with Creative Commons, you're going to be much happier, and whoever you're explaining it to is going to like you much more if you're starting with the 4.0 license. And, and so then readability and attribution are, are big advantages. The attribution is slightly changed, but uh, you can look at the two licenses to see exactly what the consequences are for you. Uh, for most people, there might be very little consequence, but it's sort of a, a clarification on uh, what you do in, in attribution. Uh, another advantage is internationalization, that IETN. Um, I don't know if people out there really know what that means. But internationalization will result in a, kind of a standard set of terms that are uh, internationally uh, recognized, sort of something that's negotiated between lots of different jurisdictions, as opposed to writing the license specifically for 55 jurisdictions or however many Creative Commons uh, decided to port the 3.0 and 2.5 licenses. Uh, so again, I'm not sure exactly what the impact will be on the Wikimedia community for an internationalized or supported license. It's my understanding there's not a lot of ported licenses on Wikimedia projects. If you know of any, I'd actually be curious to talk to you a little bit about why they decided to use a ported license. But having a single internationalized license just makes it so much easier to comply with and explain. Uh, it does include uh, a provision on database rights, which is, uh, as Lewis previously, previously explained, uh, cre creates a whole new set of things to think about, right? When are you substantially reproducing the database, and do you want to have attribution requirements attaching to your database? But Creative Commons 4 includes that now, which will provide more clarity. And, and do you want to, uh, the big change is that it will be copyleft, the share-alike version will be copyleft for the database, and that that's different from how we behave right now with Right, but so yes, yeah, so there'll be an, a, an addition of database rights though in Creative Commons 4. Uh, in, as I said at the beginning, we're on the brink of the Creative Commons 4 license coming out. I believe they're on draft 3 right now, uh, still working on making it that final copy we all know and love. But uh, luckily, it's all available on their wiki and it's, there's very comprehensive information about it. So if you are really just excited about getting involved in Creative Commons 4, I, I encourage you to take a read through. Uh, draft three and probably have a good idea of what the final version of the license will look like. It's 80 day now. So, uh, in, in trends in cultural licenses or in open cultural licenses, uh, it, it's not a, again a proliferation of new licenses that's really uh, concerning, but just new concern about compatibility between the licenses. If you go and look through commons, you see a large number of cultural licenses that uh, people are using, and how exactly all of those licenses fit together is somewhat complicated. Luckily, there, there's fairly good documentation on the Creative Commons website and on uh, Wikimedia Commons to, to help kind of guide people through that, but uh, that's something that we're going to have to think about uh, continuously as uh, something new comes into the field. Right? Another thing that uh, we see as a legal team that works with people who create uh, Creative Commons content for the Wikimedia community is an increased number of questions about how Creative Commons licensing fits in with the terms of use of websites people use. So for example, if content is coming out of something like Flickr or Pinterest or Facebook or Instagram, people are creating <coughs> content, uh, what are the license terms that uh, are attaching to those, to those creative works? So some websites make it very easy to declare the fact that if you take a picture and upload it to Flickr, you can say this is Creative Commons licensed. But other 
places uh, are producing lots and lots of photography and content uh, on the internet, such as Instagram, and are not exactly providing easy avenue, avenues for people to put their, their works under a, an open cultural license, despite the fact that a lot of these services depend on collaboration and work between uh, a lot of their users. So I think it's sort of in their interest to have a copyright regime that supports collaboration, but a lot of them just don't really understand that yet, so we have, I guess, an opportunity to educate. Uh, but it's not just incoming content, it's also sort of outgoing content from our projects. If we find a great picture on Wikimedia Commons, can you make that your Facebook profile? Uh, what, what are the implications on Facebook's requirements that they want to be able to relicense the, whatever you upload to their services under certain terms? to the fact that you have a Creative Commons license to use that content, right? Do you have the ability to comply with the Facebook terms of service when you upload an image from Wikimedia Commons? And these, these are sort of complicated questions because I don't think anyone drafted the Facebook terms of service to make it uh, maximally compatible with people who want to use Wikimedia content and stuff. But uh, it's, it's just an increasing question. It's sort of complicated to think through. So, uh, it's, a, I guess, an opportunity for us to, to speak with new emerging uh, websites to just encourage copyright regimes that allow collaboration. We, we did get, uh, we just negotiated last week with a social uh, website that some of you will have heard of, most of you will have heard of, uh, to change their terms of service to explicitly allow Creative Commons uh, uploads that previously you'd read the fine print, but uh, it wasn't actually possible. So. Small wins uh, is, is how we're going to get them. And it, it's, it's the sort of situation, at least from, from my observation, that it's not like they don't want Creative Commons content. They, they take it, they, they put up with it, they have no complaints. They just legally haven't said it's okay, right? So it's an opportunity for us to find the problem and help them try and solve it uh, because that's what we do as we do. And, and finally, I guess there's a, an increase in open educational resources which are under a variety of different licenses um, with a variety of different terms. So things like attribution could be slightly different for uh, various open educational repositories. Uh, I, I seem to think there's a, a growing number of non-commercial uh, educational resources which is sort of problematic if you want to integrate uh, things like Wikiversity or Wikisource with open educational content, but the, the just a growing number of repositories that are embracing the word open means that like, we need to explain the importance of having and having non commercial content. Uh, and uh, at least so far, we've seen minimal enforcement on uh, Creative Commons and uh, open cultural licenses in general, but uh, I guess I will use that as a segue to the open questions. Uh, a few things that we should probably be thinking about as a broader Wikimedia community are how do we fit in with the Creative Commons for timeline? You know, and what is, what is our process for sort of dealing with the fact that there's a new Creative Commons license that has some advantages? So uh, how, how does that work? That's something we're gonna have to sort of figure out together, but it's, it's a good thing to start thinking about now, despite the fact that we don't have the actual final copy of the license yet. Uh, and what, what is our role in enforcement? Um, I took a scan through Wikipedia Forks and Mirrors pretty recently, and I was just sort of surprised at the state it's in. Um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for us to ensure that people are actually complying with Creative Commons licenses around the internet. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if we've been thinking recently about what our role in enforcement is, so I'm open to hear what you guys have to say. And then, and finally, finally uh, we talk a lot about advocating to our governments, but we might have easy wins to make next door with services that uh, do not have terms that allow us to use Creative Commons content on their websites or take content out of their websites under Creative Commons content. So maybe we should be thinking about ways we can get places like Facebook or other, uh, other websites to uh, integrate Creative Commons better and just make sure that the content can flow smoothly around them. Thank you. 
by certify and get the idea that the way you use content is actually for fun. Um, the reason why there are so much, um, there are so many compliance issues is not just only bad will and ignorance, it's also confusion that um, actually creates uh, a scenario in which um, nine out of ten cases of reuse um, will have at least one um, big screw up when it comes to conditions set out in license version 3, what kind of attribution should happen. It's not just the author, it's also the license itself and it's the requirement to lead to the license and the resource. And most pages utterly fail, um, including some publications coming from the, the broader Wikimedia universe. Yeah, as, as someone who gets to review people saying, am I complying with Creative Commons license? It, it is, it, it can be sort of difficult sometimes. And we we have to ensure that we are not only producing content, but sort of educating people. But that runs up against uh, just the difficulty of dealing with legal issues on the internet, right? We have a limited ability to give advice to third parties, and we have a limited ability to guarantee you when certain things are complying with the license, since a lot of it is sort of context specific. Uh, but I think the Creative Commons for license, it's clarity and the fact that it kind of includes more reasonable uh, language uh, around things like attribution means that we, we have, I guess, less work to do when we go to inform people about how to comply. So I think that, that's sort of good news on the, the helping people out front. Creative Commons is making that easier. That's a good thing. But there's, there's also, I guess, room for us to be involved and to, to, to help document these sort of things. So I, I think our Creative Commons expert will share a, the formal opinion of the Creative Commons organization. Well, I, I didn't know I was signing up for that. I was just going to well, Maybe it's not a question. <laughs> so, hello, I'm Kat. Uh, aside from being uh, outgoing from the community board, I'm also an attorney at Creative Commons now. So I just wanted to say hello for people who had additional questions as to what Creative Commons you can come and find me. You can also come and find John, who is next to me from Creative Commons. Uh, we are going to we are going to work a lot on a lot of things around the release of core, such as uh, better guidance for how you might comply, like more examples on the market views and things like that, so it will be a little bit easier. Uh, but if you have suggestions for that, you can either come and find me, or I really encourage you to sign up for the Creative Commons community mailing list for the CC community and share your ideas with all of us. Thank you, Kat. Um, I, I, um, I, I'm going to file a bug. I used some stuff from Commons in my blog this week and uh, discovered that we actually have a bug in our attribution suggestions uh, from Commons when you use the, when you click the like, use this photo button. Um, so <laughs> uh, so there's, there's, I think that's a good example of what Matthias is saying about it being uh, hard to get right, even for people who tried to do, uh, who tried to do it pretty well. So I'm going to buzz through open source because, because uh, yeah, clocks. Um, the good news about open source is that not much is changing. Yay! Um, there are uh, a handful of new licenses uh, that are either pretty new or becoming more popular. Uh, so the Afero GPL uh, version 3 is now four or five years old. Uh, it is, uh, depending on how you want to count, somewhere between like, you know, somewhere around five, ten percent of open source projects, uh, at least by some counts, use Afero GPL now. Um, so it's a, for those of you who don't know, sorry, uh, Afero GPL is a license that says uh, the copyleft, um, which I, I think, that, or the share alike requirements, applies when you distribute the software over the internet, is the simplest way to think about it. The general public license that we use for MediaWiki does not apply uh, in that circumstance, right? Yeah, just when you distribute the software rather than when you're running it. Yes. It, it is, I, I, just as our, uh, our council here programs our, uh, our CTO uh, lawyers, um, and, and, and it may be better at it. Both of them are, he's a better programmer than I am at this point. He's probably a better lawyer than I am at this point. Um, 
if you if you want to go into the depths of AGPL, we can. I'm happy to discuss with you, preferably over a beer. Um, the trend that we're seeing uh, with new licenses is, like Creative Commons, they are simpler and easier to read, and that's a good thing for all of us. Uh, and, but thankfully also that unlike uh, data and culture, the rate of change is slowing, which is great. Um, the big trend that everybody is talking about in open source these days is more permissive licensing. Um, for a long time, GPL, uh, the general public license, was the dominant uh, license for all new open source projects. Over 50% of all projects that are open source were licensed under GPL. Um, it is still uh, the single most common license, uh, but a lot of new projects have licenses now that say essentially, do whatever you want. Uh, and, uh, you know, give me attribution sometimes. Um, but that's a, that's a big trend, uh, and it's, uh, I think it's impacting us, because a lot of the libraries that we use now for example, jQuery that is part of the user interface for MediaWiki uh, is under these more permissive licenses. On the one hand, it gives us more flexibility, um, but on the other hand, uh, there's uh, sometimes some complexity around combining it with GPL. Some of you that are on Wikitech will have seen discussions about how we comply with GPL in our JavaScript. Uh, because of time, I will not get into that right now, um, but suffice to say, it's complicated. Um, it trends, uh, you know, other trends, there's a perception of increased in enforcement. Um, the, it's not clear that this is actually happening, but there's definitely an increased <laughs> concern. Uh, a lot of what I did in my previous job was get paid to calm people down, to say, actually, you're doing the right thing, or here's how to fix it. Um, it's a lucrative job, because uh, people are, are afraid. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully it's not affecting us as Wikipedians too much, even if it's a bigger trend. A really great trend, it is clear that these open source licenses, and by extension, Creative Commons licenses, are enforceable at this point, right? There was a time 10 years ago uh, when it wasn't really clear. Nobody had ever actually sued over GPL, right? And so it wasn't clear, it was so weird, and was still so different for a lot of lawyers, uh, that, they, that they instinctively would say, well, nobody's ever tried it in court, right? Uh, and we've now crossed that point. It's gone to court a couple times in Europe, uh, related licenses have gone to court in the U.S., uh, and uh, they have always been found to be enforceable. So that's good news, not just for uh, us protecting our software, but also for protecting our content. Um, source questions, again, because of, how did we spend so much time? Nobody asked us questions in the, when Jeff was on the stage. Um, so we had uh, you know, the GPL JavaScript and permissive versus AGPL. The one thing that I want to say about the permissive licensing trend, I believe that part of why it is happening is that a lot of people are realizing that GPL for server software, like what we do with MediaWiki, is essentially permissive because of how the GPL works. Uh, and so people are choosing either to go more permissive or to go towards the more restrictive and fair GPL. Uh, and at some point, uh, I think we are going to have to grapple a little bit with that question of, hey, we're using a license that might not uh, that has one effect, even though we may have intended it to have another. Uh, so, you know, I think we're going to have increased grappling with that over time with media. <laughs> um, this is supposed to be Q&A. Uh, there is tea. Uh, so anyone who wants to ask us questions, feel free. Uh, we would love to field them. Uh, but if not, uh, also, you know, feel free to go have your tea. Uh, I'll hand down. Thanks, I have just a remark, and I'm sorry that your uh, boss is leaving right now, because I wanted to say that uh, about the jerky lawyers, uh, I would never have thought of you, you're like the sword and shield, or at least the shield. And I like to read your text from the legal department. I have to read them with much concentration. The topics are complicated. Sometimes you use legal terms, necessarily, of course. But in general, I think uh, you might have made job make this text comprehensible also to people in a foreign language and I would like to encourage you to go on on that road. And especially I'm saying this, I hope I'm not with other departments of the foundation like the tech department or uh, the software department. Well, maybe you can take them with you on that road. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. That, uh, it was um, it was gushing praise of the legal department. Um, but, uh, so thank you. 
I <laughs> um, pinch me. Uh, you know, I mean, we're all. Um, it, it, it's it's. Um, Oh, and, and, and yeah, that specifically gushing praise that we are that we try to be really good about communicating in simple English, try to avoid legal phrases. Um, I, I, you know, I want to give a little war story here. Uh, one of our designers came to us uh, early in the privacy policy process and said, hey, uh, you know, I just read this new privacy policy of this new, you know, Web 35.0 site, and it's like all sweet and easy to read and really nice fonts, and, and it would be really nice if you guys could do that. And uh, and I got to say, hey, uh, yeah, this is totally on our you know on our to do list. Uh, several of us have on our desk a book called Typography for Lawyers. Like we, we want to make things uh, not just read well but look well. Um, we're really serious about cutting down the number of words. Uh, when I was a, when I did the Mozilla license, I cut the number of words in that license almost in half. And I think that's uh, that was something I did in my first year as a lawyer. And I'm probably never going to do anything better than that in my whole career as a lawyer. Then cut out half the words of a well of a widely used document. So you realize Jeff can hear you right now. <laughs> it's all downhill, Jeff. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm from the community. Um, I'm a developer and I'm active using the two lab servers. And we, we get told from time to time, or oh, you cannot access this this and that. It's waiting for legal. Waiting for legal. Waiting. Okay, so um, uh, so two things. Um, one thing uh, that I think probably should have been mentioned in our last talk, we've gone from two lawyers to five lawyers in the space of about 18 months. And a lot of the reason why we've done that is to make ourselves more responsive. Uh, and I apologize, the reason the Tool Labs uh, has been slow is because that's been on my desk. Uh, I'm excited to say that at four o'clock, there will be a Tool Labs presentation where in a new term this will be revealed. Uh, that will be lovely and easy to use and hopefully fairly permissive um, uh, and that will explain better uh, what, what kind of stuff goes on there. It will have, to tie it to the theme of this, it will have language about open source uh, licenses in there uh, that will make clear uh, something that was not clear on Tool Server, unfortunately. Uh, that there was code on there uh, under proprietary licenses uh, and we've made a policy decision uh, that Tool Labs will have uh, only open source licenses uh, except under, out of all the things in this talk, I didn't think that would be the one with the applause on it, but, um, uh, you know, there, we will make case-by-case -case exceptions, but you will have to apply to legal, you will have to talk to legal, um, and, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's going to be a challenge for some folks, uh, but we think that that's important, uh, because it helps us uh, turn tool server from something in the transition from tool, tool server to tool labs, one of the big goals for us uh, is to make a system that is maintainable and shareable, right? So that if one maintainer gets burnt out and leaves, uh, instead of people going, ah, I don't know how to make this tool work, right? Things will be repeatable, replaceable, uh, and they'll be licensed in a way that anybody can use and fork and work on without any concerns or risks or, uh, or worries. So that's a, a you know, uh, so, so it's there now. Uh, I apologize that it's been sitting on my desk for too long. Any other questions? I, I, can you take your mic too, or to one of them? Like, uh, how does Wikidata make a distinction between non-copyrightable information and copyrightable expression? Um, uh, I mean, Denny might be a better person to answer this almost. Um, uh, I, I mean, I think it's going to be a complex one that we're going to have to learn about over time. The bottom line is that the types of facts that are getting put into Wikidata right now are things like years, uh, physical locations. Uh, if, if, if Denny calls me up tomorrow and says, you know, we've decided to put whole paragraphs of articles into Wikidata, then, um, then I, it'll be an excuse to fly to Germany. Um, I'll, I'll have only a little bit of luggage. I will have a very big stick. Um, and, uh, you know, but that's sort of the line right now is sticking to small, specific factoids and links to other things. And we're quite comfortable that those are not uh, protectable. Uh, it, so, you know, I mean, a, as Wikidata expands to new types of data, inevitably there will be questions. We'll have to sort of play them by ear because uh, there's not. Uh, this is one of those things. The reason why we say it depends so often is because drawing these lines is hard. And so, I guess it is possible to 
take certain things and make them impossible to stick inside of Wikidata, like you can't put longer than a sentence into a data field. But I also think that there's room for the community to build policies and to try and figure these things out, because just saying it's no longer than a sentence isn't enough, as you, you probably already know. So this is something that the Wikidata community should be thinking about. How do they build a policy that's understandable, and how do they sort of just how do they, how do they make this happen? Because it's not not going to be something we can write on our own, right? like just just the way Wikipedia policies are built. I can say the community is thinking about it because they've been asking me about it all week. So, <laughs> is, the go is the open government license uh, UK 1.0 or 2.0 compatible with CC? No. Uh, Despite yeah. what they say. Uh, so I believe that 2.0 has language that implies compatibility. I have personally complained to the authors that I think it does a really bad job of that. Um, but it is at least, for 2.0, I can't speak for 1.0 offhand, uh, though Matthias is telling me definitely not. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, that's not, um, from my read of 2.0, that is, yeah. Um, I mean, they say that that is their intent, and to some extent, perhaps the community can choose to rely on that, um, but it's it's not well done. It, you know, compatibility uh, is something I could literally give a, in, in open licenses, is something I could literally, uh, and in fact recently have, given half-day lectures on. Uh, and it is uh, it's a really complicated question. I don't blame them for getting it wrong. I do wish they'd consulted with better people earlier. Go ahead while they're passing uh, I wanted to ask briefly about uh, open standards. Uh, in general, like, the Wikimedia Foundation is basically relied exclusively on open standards, Og Vorbis, PNG, etc., etc. Uh, recently, there's been some discussion about uh, kind of bad reasons, particularly mobile, but also other reasons, uh, allowing some proprietary standards like MP4 or something like that. Uh, have you guys thought about, about, about those trade-offs? If, if, you, if you agree with the pragmatic uh, approaches and say we need to sacrifice open standards for compatibility when it's appropriate to make that kind of trade-off and it's not appropriate. I mean, I think that's very much a case-by-case -case kind of thing that's going to depend specifically on the, uh, the pragmatic considerations. Um, so it's going to be different for video than it might be for I, you know, I'm, I, I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm blanking on an example, but uh, the thing with the video case is that literally every, every modern phone on earth has support for these proprietary standards. Um, and so it's really hard to avoid that, you know, big fact of literally billions of devices staring in the face, right? Uh, where there's a case where uh, the open standard versus closed standard is a much closer thing than you know, we'll look at those trade-offs. I, I, you know, look, I'm a, I'm a card-carrying free software foundation member. Uh, it, it pains me, uh, and have been, I'm an advisor to the World Wide Web Consortium's Patents and Standards Interest Group. Uh, I have a deep passion for open standards, um, uh, and, it, and it pains me to, to, to think that there are sometimes those, those cases where it's an important trade-off. Um, but it, at least in this particular example, it probably is. So what? So our job as the legal team at that point is to negotiate the best deal we can uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, that, that, that the patent terms we get and uh, the risks to us are as, as low as humanly possible, right? Because uh, we don't, uh, how to put it, if we were to use uh, a guiding principle for us with the proprietary standards, uh, will always be that we must be able to get out of it should something go wrong, right? Um, we're never, uh, at least not while I'm here, will we rely solely on a proprietary standard. There will always be some sort of backup with an open standard. Um, uh, and I, I'm, you know, I will probably, I, I hope I do not have to regret those words, um, but, you know, but I think that's um, it's an unfortunate reality of what we're such a downer note to end on. Does anybody have an open, uh, you know, uplifting question we can uh, we can wrap on? You you had a question, sir. Uh, my question uh, regards to CC zero waiver. In fact, not license because CC zero is not license at all. 
but if the problem with CC0 at least in Poland and in several other European jurisdictions is that uh, uh, actually the local law does not allow to waive copyright at all, right? So, uh, for example, in Poland there was such a situation that the Ministry of Culture said to the museums, you cannot waive uh, metadata under CC0 because it's legal in Poland, right? So, CC0 is not a good solution for at least many European countries. I, I think if you just pass the, your microphone to your right, uh, the CC folks can feel that one for us. Best answer ever. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, uh, it is, in effect, a license for, for those cases that you described. So, there's a fallback license in CC0 for the cases where the waiver is not, um, not possible. Well, if that doesn't work as well, that's, that's another problem, but it, there is a license in there. So, it's meant to be an unconditional license, unconditional perpetual license for all the rights in cases that the waiver doesn't work. I would be very curious to hear why the license uh, doesn't work because uh, I, I can see why the waiver might not work in some places, but if that license doesn't work, there are way bigger problems yes. in open licensing, <laughs> I think. I, I'd also ask you to talk to Creative Commons Poland, actually, and, and for some of them, and so that they can start access and say it if it doesn't work. Yeah, okay. Never mind, no We will see Creative Commons Poland. Uh, Kat and I will be at the lovely Creative Commons <laughs> Summit in in, a, in many miles and a whole lot of jet lag from now, uh, in, in a week or so. So I guess we could probably talk to them too there. Uh, I, I think that's, uh, you know, we're, we, we're way into tea time. Uh, Stephen and I would be totally happy to field questions. Thank you all. Oh, Come